各位同事。Good afternoon, members. This is the first meeting of the House Committee in the Year of the Dog.、Um, we have already formed a quorum. It is time to start the meeting. Item one: confirmation of minutes for the 14th meeting held on the 9th of February 2018. The minutes have already been sent out to members prior to the meeting. So far,、uh, no comments have been received from members concerning the minutes. So I'd like to invite you to confirm the minutes. Confirmed. Item two: matters arising. Report by the chairman on her meeting with the chief secretary for administration. I haven't got anything special to report to you, Miss Tanya Chen. Would you like to say something under this item? Yes, indeed. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you for reflecting to the Secretary of Justice、uh, in relation to the Bills Committee looking at the collocation. Would like to have her attendance、uh, this morning. We had our second meeting.、Uh, she attended the meeting. I would like to、uh, reflect、um, my concern. We have a lot of、uh, constitutional and legal issues, and at today's meeting, we're not able to ask questions concerning the、uh, express rail line. We like to look at the arrangements, the frequency, the return, etc. So we hope that both the、um, secretary as well as other directors of bureaus will continue to attend the meeting. So please、uh, forward this view to the CS4A. A member has raised this、uh, proposal, so clerk, please have it minuted. I'm sure、um, the chair, lady, as well as the deputy chair of the bills committee,、um, have noted your point, and they will take up the arrangements with the administration. I will also report this to the S for A. Item three: Legal Service Division report on subsidiary legislation gazetted on the ninth of February, twenty eighteen. Paper LS thirty five slash seventeen eighteen. I would like to invite the legal adviser to give us a brief introduction. Thank you, Madam Chair.、Um, the report covers one item of subsidiary legislation, namely Hazardous Chemicals Control Ordinance Amendment of Schedule Two, Order twenty eighteen.、Uh, this is to give effect. To add two chemicals to the schedule, so that、um, the manufacturing, exporting, importing, or using of such chemicals、uh, must be carried out with a permit, and this is to、um, give effect to the amendment made in 2017 to the list of chemicals at Annex Three to the Rotterdam Convention. It will come into effect on the 1st of July 2018. According to the administration, such chemicals are related to the manufacturing of plastic products as well as the processing of polyvinyl chloride. Thank you. Thank you, legal adviser. I'd like to ask members whether you consider a subcommittee should be formed to study the item in detail. No. I would like to remind members that if you would like to amend the subsidiary legislation, the deadline would be the 28th of March. Item four: business for the council meeting of the 28th of February 2018. Report number seven slash seventeen of the House Committee, consideration of subsidiary legislation and other instruments. The draft report relating to the subsidy legislation, the period for amendment of which will expire on the 28th of February, has been sent to members. So far, no members、uh, have indicated to speak on them.、Uh, A questions. Twenty-two written questions have been scheduled for the meeting. B first reading and moving of second reading. The administration has advised the clerk to the legislative council that the financial secretary. Will、um, present to the council at the、uh, meeting first the appropriation bill 2018 and second the estimates of expenditure for the year ending the 31st of March 2019. Item five, advance information on business for a council meeting of the 21st of March 2018. Government motions.、Um, 
the Secretary for Transport uh, will move a proposed resolution uh, under Section 30 of the Housing Ordinance, Cap 283. Um, the wording of the speech has already been sent out to members via paper CB3344-1718. I would like to give the floor to the legal advisor. Please uh, brief us on the contents of the proposed resolution. Thank you, Chair. The purpose of the subsidiary legislation um, seek, uh, seeks to amend housing traffic contraventions fixed penalty by law. So as to look at the traffic uh, contraventions within the jurisdiction of the housing authority, there will be amendment including the following. That is to remove the payment collection functions of magistrate's courts for fixed penalty as well as um, the payment of the fixed penalties via the phone banking service as well as the uh, internet. Um, it will uh, come into operation on the 1st of June 2018. Members, would you like to set up a subcommittee for this? No. The administration will move the motion at the LegCo meeting of the 21st of March 2018. Item 6, reports of bills committees and subcommittees. A. Report of the Bills Committee on United Nations Anti-Terrorism Measures Amendment Bill 2017, LC Paper Number CB 2904-1718. Well, um, this is uh, to respond uh, to the UN Security Council Resolution 20. Uh, 2178, as well as the Financial Action Task Force recommendations. Um, it is uh, proposed that uh, new prohibitions should be added, uh, including the following. That is prohibitions of travel for the purpose of terrorist acts or terrorist training, as well as the prohibition to deal with property related to a terrorist or terrorist uh, associates. Members in general are in support of the legislative proposals put forward in the bill. The deliberation of the Bill's Committee has been set out in details in the written report. The main concerns of members are as follows. There is the meaning of terrorist act as well as terrorist training. Uh, the rationale for and the drafting of prohibitions relating to travel applicable to Hong Kong permanent residents only, the extraterritorial application, as well as the relevant offences and penalties. The Booth Committee raises no objection to the resumption of second reading debate on the bill at the Council meeting of the 21st of March. The Bills Committee and the Administration will not propose any amendments to the bill. That's all in relation to the report. Next, uh, B, report of the Bills Committee on Inland Revenue Amendment Number 4, Bill 2017. I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Kenny Flynn, Chairman of the Bills Committee, to speak. The Inland Revenue Ordinance to extend profits tax exemption to onshore privately offered open-ended fund companies hereinafter referred to as subject OFCs. The Bills Committee has held two meetings to meet with the administration and has invited public views on the bill. Members generally support the bill. In the course of the deliberations, the Bills Committee has examined issues including the residence requirement and the non-closely held condition that subject OFCs are required to meet for profits tax exemption, tax treatment of investment by a subject OFC, taxation of carried interest received by investment managers, and anti-avoidance measures. The Bills Committee has also sought assurance from the administration that the proposed tax regime for subject OFCs is in keeping with the latest international standards under the base erosion and profit shifting package of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development and the European Union. On the proposed tax treatment of investments by a subject OFC in private companies, the Bills Committee notes that due to the 10% de minimis rule imposed by the Securities and Future Commission at the fund regulation level. A subject OFC may invest in securities of 
overseas private companies without a limit, but is subject to a limit of 10% of its gross asset value for investing in securities of local private companies. The Bills Committee is concerned that such differential tax treatment of investments in local versus overseas private companies would be considered as ring fencing. And hence harmful under the prevailing international standards. Besides, the bills committee is also concerned whether there is a loophole that may give rise to tax leakage, since the subject OFC can invest in securities of overseas private companies, which can in turn own assets in Hong Kong. To address the ring fencing concern and plug the loophole. The administration has proposed amendments to the bill to remove the 10% de minimis rule at the tax level, as well as tainting provisions. With the, pro with the proposed amendments, a subject OFC, as long as it has been registered with the Securities and Future Commission, and meets all the requirements in the bill, would be allowed to enjoy tax exemption on all of its profits, provided that it does not carry on. Direct trading or a direct business undertaken in Hong Kong, involving assets of a non-Schedule 16A class, and it does not invest in certain specified types of private companies. The Bills Committee supports, in principle, the amendments proposed by the administration, and will not propose amendments to the bill. The Bills Committee does not object to the resumption of second reading of the bill. At the council meeting of 21st March 2018,、uh, the bills committee will submit its written report later. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Candy Flang. Seeing report of the bills committee on Inland Revenue Amendment Number、no. Seven, Bill 2017, I would like to invite Mr. Holden Chow, chair of the bills committee, to speak. Thank you, Madam Chairman. The purpose of the、uh, Inland Revenue Amendment Number、no. Seven, Bill 2017, is to amend the Inland Revenue Ordinance so as to implement a two-tier profits tax regime for the years of assessment commencing on or after the 1st of April 2018. The Bills Committee has held two meetings and invited views from the public, including the related organisations. The Bills Committee supports the bill in general. The main、uh, areas discussed by us during the deliberation included the following. The impact on tax revenue and economy. Rationale for setting the upper limit of assessable profits for the lower tax rates at Hong Kong dollars two million.、Um, the rationale for the restrictions on the application of the proposed tax regime. The avoidance of double benefits as well as、uh, work involved in administration and enforcement. Some members were concerned about the restrictions imposed on connected entities. The administration at a meeting. Gave an explanation about the policy intent as well as the drafting approach. In response to our request, the administration has reduced to writing、um, the taxation arrangements、uh, under certain circumstances. In addition, we were also concerned about the avoidance of double benefits, including profits. Generated by qualifying debt instruments, as well as the remaining accessible profits. In response, the administration will propose amendments to the bill to bring out clearly the policy intent. We agree to the CSAs, and the details are set up in the written report. The bills committee will not propose any amendments to the bill, and we do not raise any objection to the resumption of the second reading debate on the bill at the council meeting of the 21st of March. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chow. It's a leak. Do you report? Of the bills committee on Chinese medicine amendment bill 2017, I call upon Ms. Alice Mack, chairman of the bills committee, to speak. Ms. Alice Mack, thank you. The、uh, bill empowers the director of health to order to recall Chinese medicines, proprietary Chinese medicine, or intermediate products from the market, and to prohibit by order the sale of the same. Should the director have a reasonable cause to believe that?、Um, The、um, such products may pose threats or harms to public health. 
In general, members support the legislative proposals to enhance protection of public health. Members have in the main expressed concern over the scope of products covered, the principles and procedures for recall, and the liability of the traders concerned if they fail to achieve a full recall. The administration guarantee, uh, under, uh, promised uh, the um, members of the bills committee that in carrying out the Chinese men's safety order, the director of health will adopt the same approach in the current uh, system of uh, recall of Chinese medicine. And we'll also discuss uh, with persons bound by the order the details of implementation, the time limit. There are defense provisions provided in the bill, and there is an appeal mechanism so that uh, persons bound by the order may lodge appeals to the director of health. Some members are concerned that about the uh, sampling method and testing standards of um, the current uh, surveillance system of Chinese medicines. They are worried whether there can be effective um, implementation of the order. They urge the administration to step up uh, market surveillance of such products so that uh, problematic products can be expeditiously and effectively recalled. Members note that the administration is uh, considering uh, amendment to definition of Chinese proprietary medicine under the Chinese Medicine Ordinance Cap 549 so as to enhance regulation. The uh, members urge the administration to address the concerns of the industry and uh, com conduct a full review of the ordinance as soon as possible. Uh, having taken into account members' views, the administration will move five CSAs uh, to the bill, and we have no objection to it. We have no intention to move amendments to the bill. We do not object to the resumption of second reading debate of the bill, and the administration has expressed that the uh, second reading debate will be resumed on the 21st of March 2018. I will submit a written report to the House Committee later. May I remind members that the deadline for give, moving, uh, giving notice to amendments to the bill is the uh, 12th of March. Position on bills, committees, and subcommittees. As at the 22nd of February, Thursday, there are 11 BCs in operation, and there are eight subcommittees under the House Committee, uh, four um, under the um, subcommittees and the panels in action. Item 8. Priority allocation of a debate slot on the report of the Joint Committee on Long Term Care Policy. I call upon the Secretary of, I mean, uh, Chairman of the Joint Subcommittee, Dr. Fernando Zhang, to speak. Thank you. The Joint Subcommittee on Long Term Care Policy under the Welfare Services Panel and the uh, Health Services Panel have a ceased operation upon expiry of the 12-month period uh, pending a vacant slot for reactivation of our work. Uh, it is anticipated that a vacant slot is not will not be available in the near future, and the Joint Committee has already submitted a report to the two panels on its work in the past 12 months. In view of the wide public concern on long-term care policy and services, the Joint Subcommittee proposes that a motion debate be held on the report to provide an opportunity for all members to express views on a subject and for the administration to respond. On behalf of the Joint Subcommittee, I would like to seek the House Committee's approval for a priority allocation of a debate slot so that there can be a motion debate held on the report at the Council meeting on the 9th of May 2018. We also propose that in addition to the debate on the motion and the report, only one other debate on a motion on a member's motion are not intended to have legislative effect shall be held at the same council meeting. Thank you. So do members agree that we accord priority to the allocation of a debate slot to uh, the um, report? If members are agreeable, I'd like to see members' view. On uh, the proposal that other than uh, the debate on the motion on the report, only one other debate on a member's motion not intended to have legislative effect shall be held at the same council meeting, so that there will only be one plus one motion debates at that seating. Any views, please? If there are none, then 
all members are agreeable. So we will ask the Secretariat to arrange for us that um, if we can have uh, motion debates with no legislative effect, uh, this uh, will be one of them. And then uh, there will still be one slot available for balloting for members' motions. AOB, we have none. Thank you very much. May I wish you a very healthy and successful year of the talk.